So here's a fun fact. There's a way to effectively turn water into oil. So, uh, time to get a drink. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we messed with refineries and started making turbo fuel. And with the amount of oil we're bringing in and our current refinery setup, we'll be able to run 300 plus fuel generators. Meaning we can generate over 40,000 megawatts, brother. But then I started reading your guys' comments. And you told me about the creme de la creme. An alternate turbo fuel recipe. But I couldn't believe it. You see, I have been doing many hard drive hunts on our Twitch live streams. And look at this map. All of the grayed out hard drives are the ones we've gathered. And never before have I seen this alternate turbo fuel recipe. But then the game moved to the early access branch and I decided one more hard drive. Just one more. Could we get the alternate turbo fuel recipe? And lo and behold, we did brother. We got it. So good news, bad news. Good news is we have the alternate turbo fuel recipe. The bad news is uh, we're probably gonna have to change up our uh, design from last time quite a bit. But don't worry, we're not gonna go super crazy into the numbers this time. Gonna keep it chill, gonna keep it concise. Because last time, I don't know if you guys liked that or not, but I tried to go and explain myself about how I process numbers and stuff, but it definitely was heavier on the math side. So this time, uh, let's just quickly overview this new recipe here. So, alternate turbo heavy fuel. And the big difference here is, this uses heavy oil residue instead of fuel. But it uses more compacted coal. So yeah, it's better it seems from the outset, but we kinda need to make the system to figure out how things work. And number one, let's try and turn this 37.5 into a n more nice number. And conveniently, 37.5 times 8 equals 300, so I like that one. So let's just pretend this is 8 refineries right here. Easy peasy. So now we need 300 heavy oil residue. Alrighty. And looking through the heavy oil residue recipes, what do we got? Well, we have this one, mainly. And this takes 30 crude to make 40 heavy oil residue. So that means we'll need about seven and a half of these refineries to make 300, or we could just make each refinery run to 37.5 uh, output, which will match our turbo fuel input, and that will be eight refineries then at 94%, which will probably be easier. So if we have eight refineries making the heavy oil reg residue, and the eight making turbo fuel, that means we will need 225.6 crude oil to make all of the turbo fuel we need. So yeah, already it's looking like we're gonna be making a few little changes here, just a few. However though, <laughs> this is like, I thought this was a meme, but there's also another alternate recipe I missed. One that's just, it's just really strange. I didn't even consider it really. But it is this one here, diluted packaged fuel. I had this one before, I just didn't pay attention to it. It's way down here in packaging. So what this does is it makes fuel out of residue and packaged water. And I was like, bruh, packaging stuff, bad idea. Because like packaging and unpacking stuff requires a refinery for each step. But then I crunched the numbers. And it turns out that if we're using the original turbo fuel recipe, along with this weird like unpacking and packing diluted fuel thing, the numbers are insane. Like absolutely insane. Because at the end of the day, we're replacing crude oil with water. Uh-huh, and you see why this is getting crazy, right? Okay, so like I said, I didn't want to do a ton of math here this video, so I'll summarize things. With the 2,400 oil that we're bringing in, 
we could make about 40,000, 42,000 megawatts with our setup that we made last time. With the alternate turbo fuel recipe, the total amount of power we can make, guess what? Is 72,000 megawatts with the current amount of oil we're bringing in. So that's almost twice the amount. Pretty good, pretty good. Well, that is nothing. They both pale in comparison to the water setup, actually. Because since we replace all the crude oil with water, pretty much, we can make, according to my rough calculations, over 100,000 megawatts. Of course, the problem being, we'd need an insane amount of water. About 6,400 cubic meters of water per minute which equates to about 21 full pipes. And for reference, that's about three times as many pipes coming into the base as we already have. Just for the water. Except, guess what? We can package the water first, meaning we can fill 480 lines of packaged water and then send it to base. So it's not like 50 billion pipes and like pumps and all that jazz. Just the good ol' Mark four belts. And all we have to do is unpack the water back here. And since we already have the oil here, that's like, brother, it's all ready to go. So that's gonna be the deal then. We're gonna replace our existing system with this new water system. Replacing crude oil for water, it's too good of a deal, brother. Although that alternate heavy turbo fuel recipe is cool, and our existing setup does work, uh, over a hundred thousand omega watts, brother? <laughs> How could I resist? Uh, first thing we need to do is drain the world of water. And where are we gonna get water from? Well, we already have infrastructure over here to get water. However, that's too far away. So, I think we're just gonna completely blanket this side of the map, this beach area, like all around here with water extractors. And hopefully that'll be enough. Oh man, oh man. So after many, many episodes, we're back here. Our very first coal power plant, isn't it quaint? It still hasn't been decorated, but oh man. It's nice to be back. Good memories, good memories. Except for now we're gonna make it look hideous by building just 50 billion water extractors. So, how much does one get us here? 120 water per minute. Okay, that's pretty good. Because 6,400 divided by 120 equals about 53 and a third. So yeah, just a little over 50 water extractors. No big deal. That should only take up like everything you see in front of you. It's not, yeah, it's not the worst. Easily handled. We already have power here too. We can just set up like another kind of dock type thing. And yeah, should only take a minute. Okay, so maybe a minute or two here, but they're all in now. And we have a 21 and a bit pipes of water coming into this area. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think most of the time with this was just making sure things lined up. Uh, the water extractors, Kinda weird, kinda weird. Usually what you can do is you can just press control to easily build a bunch of buildings like together in a line. So like if you build one, press control, then they like kinda stick in a line. Water extractors don't really do that though. But that's all right, because they're all in now. And we're moving, we're grooving. All of them are set to 94%, so all of the pipes you see are going to be full of water. And all of the pumps are kind of hidden under here, underneath this balcony that goes all the way across. And yeah, <laughs> this looks really, really cool. And it's unfortunate that our like first power plant looks so insignificant now, but it's kind of just a sign of the times. Moving from like, I don't know, 200 megawatts to over 100,000 megawatts. You're gonna see some upgrades, just a few. <laughs> okay. So where does that leave us now then? Well, we have to pack all of the water up and then I have prepped a, well, kind of prepped, a little belt area that will go back to base. So, how do we pack up 6,000-ish water? 
how many refineries are we gonna need here? Well, we can't even build one, so that's bad. So let's see here. How fast can we pack the water up? It's 60 per minute? Yeah, 60 per minute. Good, good, good. So at that rate, we can pack 6,400 cubic meters of water with about 107 refineries. Which is, it, it's not the worst. But then also, we need the empty canisters too. Luckily though, when you craft empty canisters, you make them in just the normal constructor here. They take plastic, which is annoying. However, we can reuse them. So we craft the extra empty canisters with plastic, no big deal. And then this machine will load them with water. And then we just unpack the fuel and we get our casters back. And they can kind of like cycle through the system in an infinite loop. So we don't have to constantly feed our power grid with plastic. Because that would be kind of bad. The thing that is kind of bad though, is that we need to bring all of the water canisters back to bees. And then bring all of the empty canisters back to the water. And you know, this isn't like that small a distance from like A to B. So <laughs> that's gonna be a lot of belt work. But it's better than dealing with all the pipes, honestly. Yeah, because you see these verticals here? The verticals already back near the beach. Those are pretty bad. That would have taken many, many pumps and many, many pipes. So using belts is much simpler. But before we can belt stuff, we gotta get it packed first. So I'll start building all the refineries here and we'll go from there. Also, we probably won't build all of like the hundred or so refineries today. I kind of just want to get the system up and running to make sure everything works. And then we'll spam up the hundred refineries. So maybe for now we'll start with like, I don't know, 20? Because then after that we gotta get to fuel generators. Okay, so the building process has begun and I am starting to realize that this is a lot of water. A lot, a lot of water. Like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> So each section of water extractors here fills five pipes, right? And with the five pipes, each pipe needs five uh, refineries to pack stuff up. So I've been trying to make like this repeatable pattern and I, I think I got it here. So for every single pipe, the water comes in, it goes over, it goes into the refineries, simple stuff. All of the canisters will overflow into them and then out the back, all of the water canisters will come this way and go to here. So in the bottom, there's the input, top, output. All good. It's just we don't have a ton of space on the beach here. So I've started to build up, right? And we're gonna need about two and a half floors of refineries to make this all work. And it's just like, whoa, brother. <laughs> This isn't even the first section complete, and I'm already kind of freaking out. And we have many, 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 many more sections to do, so whew, this is gonna be a bit of a project, to say the least. However, with this much water getting back to base, we should be able to run like quite a few turbo motor setups, so we'll be good on power for a bit. And then probably on live streams, I'll repeat this pattern a couple more times whenever we need like another 10,000 megawatts or so. And tearing things out that way will make this kind of bearable. And yeah, I spent a live stream on this and we're able to completely finish off one of our packaging stations. And it looks pretty good! Looks pretty good! We have our one main entrance to the area down there, got some hyper tubes that go to all the floors, the roof done, got some walkways all around, and it's looking pretty good. And now that we have this design, we can just copy it however many times we want. Like, always the first time when you build something, it takes a long time. And as you gain more practice, you can build things faster and faster. And one thing I definitely learned from building this, is that I really think that pipes will be easier to bring back. Like, oh my gosh, so much easier. Mr. Bean, be quiet. I'm talking. Gracious. Because yeah, having to bring the full canisters to base and the empty canisters back is an excessive amount of belt work. And it drove me a little nuts. But then, uh, for the rest of this project, we're gonna stick with this method, but future projects, definitely gonna pack and unpack stuff at base. Yeah, there's just too many refineries here already. And I don't wanna fill up like my entire base with refineries just yet here. 
Or even better yet, maybe we can add in like a train station to transport all of the water back to base. But trains are for another day, another dawn. Right now, we have to deal with all this packaged water. So I think this is, yeah, the empty caster outbound line, and that is the water caster inbound line. Whoa! So with this first shipment of water, that is 300 times five, so 1,500 water. That, yeah, that's a lot. Quite a lot, all coming up through here. And that means we can make a insane amount of refineries. So let's check our recipes again here. What do we need to do? Uh, diluted packaged fuel, each of these takes 60, okay. So 1,500 divided by 60 equals 25, meaning we can have 25 diluted fuel refineries. Cool. That's a lot of refineries, but we also have a lot of belts to deal with. We'll have 13 inbound and 13 outbound lines. So we need a huge amount of space to organize things. Luckily, due to this steel belt of like random stuff that's being brought in, we kind of have this first section of this floor already kind of cordoned off to organize things with. So we can line up all of the inbound and outbound lines like so, and have the refineries making the packaged fuel just going off in this direction. And then I'm thinking, since we need so many refineries, I think we'll just have this first floor make the packaged fuel, and then we can make a second floor at about this height, and we can have refineries there making all the turbo fuel. I think that's a good way to organize things. We need 107 refineries just for the fuel, right? So all the turbo fuel stuff can easily fit upstairs then. And we also have to deal with, what is it? Uh, the heavy oil residue as well. Because we combine that with the water to make the fuel, right? And that's gonna be like another million refineries. And actually, you know what then? Better plan, revised plan. Let's do all of this diluted packaged fuel stuff downstairs here. Then we can just use conveyor belts to bring up the fuel to the next layer. And we don't have to worry about adding in more pipes and all that kind of jazz. And that should be pretty straightforward. Because then, to make the alternate heavy turbo fuel, or no, to make just the turbo fuel, we'll just extract the fuel from the canisters and combine it with the compacted coal. And there we go, system complete. All right, so let's start building a template for our diluted fuel. So we're gonna have five refineries making the actual fuel because each of the belts that are coming in will have 300 water per minute. And that goes into these refineries very nicely. And then we just have the heavy oil residue. And five times 30 equals 150. So we'll just use this alternate heavy oil residue here. That will make 40 per minute. And that means we just need to run four refineries with one at 75%. And that is all the heavy oil residue we need. Now we just pipe and belt everything together and bring the fuel upstairs to become turbo fuel. Okay, things have not gone exactly as planned and there's actually been quite the disaster. Quite the disaster indeed. Uh, everything is belted together, but something had happened actually in between this clip and the last. Essentially, my power went out. And that's usually not a problem, it happens every once in a while. And I have a protocol for when this happens. Essentially, I go to sleep as fast as I humanly can whenever the power goes out, so I can wake up when the power's back on to finish up my videos. So yeah, power went out and <laughs> I went to sleep. So when I woke up, power was back on, went to a friend's place for a couple hours, and then I came back home to finish the recording and picked up a coffee and a few like, caffeinated drinks. However, I start recording when I get home, and then the power went out again. And now this was a little different, because I've never had the power go out on me twice. And worse off than that, I had just drank all this caffeine, right? So I was just twiddling my thumbs all night, not being able to get to sleep. So I ended up being up like 24 hours or something awful like that. Even more, actually. And so when the power finally did come back on at like 8 a.m., I tried recording for a few hours and <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work very well at all. And I passed out. So that all happened. That Saturday then, I passed out around noon. And then on Sunday, I had a 12 hour super live stream to celebrate the three year anniversary of the I'm Kibitz YouTube channel. So hooray for that. But since this was the most high priority project, I needed something to work on. 
So I finished off pretty much this entire project. So consider this like an omega giant boop. <laughs> so everything is put together, running, and there are a few problems with it, but we'll get into it. Apologies for this though. I did not expect my power to go out twice. I think I'll just have to like pick up my computer and bring it to like family members place next time that happens if it does ever happen again so <laughs> but for now we're gonna just tour around everything that I've built here and also I'd highly recommend you go check out my twitch channel and watch the VOD over there of the 12 hour stream of me building this in case you want the in-depth kind of process but anyway I've already kind of explained exactly how all this is gonna work and like I said everything was just to be belted together and it has been. So we're making the alternate heavy oil residue here. That goes into the pipe, combines with the water, and that makes our packaged fuel. We have lots and lots of this now because we have copied this design five times. So there's a lot going on here and it's looking pretty snazzy. Managed to make an extremely compact design as well where the water enters through the bottom here through splitters and overflows through five refineries. And then on top, I stacked a bunch of mergers so that we could get all of the resin to merge up top here and skewed on down this way. And for now, it enters a resource sink because I don't want to deal with plastic just yet. And then all in, we are making about 1,500 packaged fuel per minute. So now we have to unpack it upstairs. And that sort of things got a little interesting because we actually had quite a few space issues getting all the refineries to fit in our base because there's 65 for turbo fuel that means with all of that packaged fuel we need the 25 for literally unpacking the fuel and so whew, it came pretty dang close down to the wire brother but we managed to fit it all in all the packaging stuff is happening right on here when there's room to unpack it anyway and what ends up happening is everything just goes into this pipe, the empty casters go into a merger, and they scoot on back down through this system here, all the way back to our water bottling station. And then the fuel comes over into these big old tanky boys and sits in there where it waits to go into one of our turbo fuel processing lines. And this is just set up how we did our last turbo fuel setup. So the fuel lines up here, compacted coal lines down there, and we just keep on rocking and rolling down the line. As you can see, we have plenty, plenty of turbo fuel. And it's pretty dang neat, brother. Whoa! You gotta check this out though at the end. Just looking down the lines of turbo fuel that we're making. That's kind of the cool thing. Because this is just the fuel line. Turbo fuel, turbo fuel, t more turbo fuel. There's just turbo fuel for days, brother. Turbo fuel for days. And we managed to get enough compacted coal for everything too, because we had a few extra sulfur nodes around us that we were able to connect. And with all the turbo fuel, I built a few temporary generators over here. And now we are producing a cool 9,450 megawatts. <laughs> But we can make a whole lot more because in total we're making 1,222 turbo fuel and that divided by the fuel generators consumption rate equals 272. So that's how many generators we can make. So that times 150 megawatts each equals 40,700 megawatts with pretty much what we got set up here. And all of this insanity uses only 337.5 crude oil. Yeah, that's probably the craziest part of all of this. <laughs> yeah, this recipe, this alternate recipe is insane. Unfortunately though, that's where the good news stops because now we have another problem. For whatever reason, our flow rate is garbage, hyper garbage. So we need these pipes to carry 300 fuel per minute for this whole system to work. Now, as you can see, that's not exactly happening at all. And I tried adding in like a ton of pumps around to fix this issue, but I, I just don't know exactly what's going on. 
Just there's not enough fuel. And people have been telling me that, Kibitz, you need to add in a ton of pumps to our huge pipeline over here. And then when I monitor this, it seems that everything's fine over here. Like all of these are like full pressure. So yeah, I just don't get it. Because when I saw this issue first, I was like, okay, simple solution. We just have to go and, oof, almost fell off there. Uh, we just have to go and add in a ton of pumps to this giant pipeline. And then everything's fine. But no, this is all good. So I don't know why then the pressure up there is bad. And then when everything enters here, it goes into all these industrial storage containers. And in here, I have a ton of pumps as well. So we got pumps over there, pumps there. We have the pumps over here. You see, again, everything's fine with the flow rate there. Flow rate's fine there too. But then it's just when we get upstairs. We get to this corner here, like literally right about here, and all of our flow rate is gone. So these pumps have a head lift of like quite a bit. It's like five of these foundations, right? But for some reason, it's just not happening, brother. So yeah, maybe it's because the flow rate's really slow down here, and we just have to add in more pumps like throughout this entire system, but I've been trying to add in more pumps, and it doesn't seem to work. So that's like that, that's there. All right, this one, holy, that guy's running. Brother. Oh wait, did I just fix the whole issue? Is this guy moving and grooving? Yeah, that's where it should be. Like 200, yeah, 300, there we go. <laughs> this was a simple solution then. We just have to add in a few more pumps around here. How's the flow rate looking now? Enhance. Oh my God, that was the whole thing. You can see now that the flow rate is like pretty much max now. Yep, everything's all good in here. You can see that every all the pumps are maxing out. These guys are rocking and rolling. Is this one increasing? No, not everything is hunky dory. But pretty much adding in more pumps will fix all our issues. At least in our piece, because now that this is running like at full flow rate, maybe now we'll start to see issues with our pipeline project. I just don't know. It's gonna take a long time to monitor and make sure everything's running correctly. But pretty much everything is moving and grooving, so I'm gonna say we are good for now. And next time we're gonna work on our permanent fuel setup. Because, oh man, I asked you guys in the last episode how we should lay out our fuel generators, and there are literally over a thousand comments on that video. So there's a lot to go through, and we'll get right to that next time. But anyway, that's gonna be all for today. So sorry about the missing an upload and also this weird kind of cut in the video. It hopefully won't happen again. But if you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like and I hope to see you in the next one. But have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye <laughs>